We go to one of your favorite spots on Midday Live, and it's medical notes. Now, the head of department for psychiatry, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Samuel Ohine, continues his education on depression and bipolar disorder. I doubt if anybody can give you a satisfactory answer. We think that some people are born with a predisposition to it. You know, that's perhaps the greatest contributory factor that we are aware of. That you may be born, if your parents or one of your parents has the condition, then statistically, you are more likely to get it. It doesn't mean you'll get it. But if we take the uh, likelihood of occurrence in the whole population, which may be between 3 to 4 percent of the population. But if one or both of your parents have it, the unlikely events, then maybe your chances of getting it are much, much higher, maybe, I don't know, 20 to 30 percent. But again, you realize that it doesn't, it's not 100 percent, it doesn't mean you get it. So it's not like sickle cell where if one has S and you inherit it, definitely. So your father may have it, your mother may have it, and yet you may be born normal. So, but maybe if they have three or four children, one or two of them may have it, and the others may be okay. But generally, there appears to be a genetic or familial component to it. Besides that, you may born, be born with the predisposition, and some things may trigger it. For example, some use of some substances like uh, marijuana may trigger people who have a predisposition to start having this problem so that even when they stop using the marijuana the problem may still continue yes um, but otherwise it's just a condition that appears to start in some people Unfortunately, in some people, it could start a little early. Even young children who start showing these predispositions, uh, these, these tendencies when they are young. But for many people, it starts when they are in their teenagers or 20s.